The C8X is in the spotlight today, and this little ship can do more than you might think. But is that enough to be worth buying? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the star citizenship, the currently flyable Anvil C8X Pisces. The Pisces was originally the Carrick snub, with the C8X variant pushing the envelope towards exploration and touring. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you know the drill by now. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And your entry into the C8X is via a deployable ramp at the rear of the ship. This takes you up, past some component access, and into the main cargo bay. There are four standard cargo units of storage available. There are also two seats, one on either side for passengers. And then between those seats and the pilot's chair is some more component access. Right at the front is the seat for the pilot. Externally, the C8X follows the Anvil theme of sleek, but rigid lines and a contrasting colour scheme with accents. Part 2 Combat Performance The C8X is armed with four size 1 weapons, two fixed in place and two on gimbals. And in keeping with other ships at this size, those gimbals can't be upsized, so you'll only ever get four size 1 weapons with the C8X. The gimbals are fairly forgiving, and if you're on target with the fixed weapons, you're sure to also be on target with the gimbals beneath the nose. The C8X is further armed with two size 1 missiles, which is a nice boost to firepower for a smaller ship like this. Let's face it, with weapons of this size, you might rightly be reluctant to go after larger targets. But against smaller opponents, such as those you'd find in low-risk bounties, the Pisces does just fine. Shields-wise, the Pisces is a little vulnerable, offering only a single size 1 shield generator, and by default, a stealth variant of it. So, this isn't a ship you'll want to be taking any kind of sustained fire. But that's not dissimilar to other tiny ships, like a Merlin, for example. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, although there are a couple of support struts, generally you'll likely feel that you have great visibility in the Pisces. Placed right at the front of the ship, it's really easy to know where the nose is, and you can see all around, which is almost universally great. The only slight drawback is that sometimes the cockpit screen can get icy, which makes it quite difficult to see outside. This is a real shame, especially in a ship that is supposed to excel at exploration. That said, the Pisces is still easy to land, owing to that helpful cockpit placement. In terms of flight characteristics, the Pisces flies really well. It's easy to control, with a bit of afterburner where required, quickly adjusts direction. In part, however, that's due to the fairly low SCM speed at 140 meters per second. The top speed at 1050 is much more in line with what you might expect, but that low SCM speed does mean that, as the pilot, you'll likely want to sacrifice a little manoeuvrability in favour of straight line speed. Wonderfully, this little ship does come equipped with a quantum drive. Whilst the stock drive isn't quick, it does allow you to cross the entire Stanton system on a single tank of fuel, which for a small ship like this is pretty good. Part 4 – Operating Costs As you might expect for a ship of this size, your operating costs are minuscule. Across rearming, refueling and repairing, you'd have to work hard to have to pay 100 Alpha UEC. 
And surprisingly, the Pisces offers a lot of options for making some money back. Firstly, combat is a possibility, with the C8X able to handle reasonably low threat missions without breaking too much of a sweat. But for many players, it'd be using the cargo space that would be the real opportunity. Although the four cargo units of storage means trading is possible, the profits would be very small in the current patch. But the physical storage makes contracts like box delivery missions or salvage missions very feasible. And as a last note, with the two strapped in seats for passengers, you've got the option of waiting to see if a player drops a beacon in need of assistance. Part 5. The Verdict Whilst the Pisces might originally have been envisaged as the snub ship to a Carrick, it certainly brings enough to the table to be a ship in its own right, helpfully taking advantage of being small and accordingly offering options to fly into the hangar of a big ship. Critically, it's versatile, offering varied gameplay options as well as room for friends. It's easy to fly, and as one of the purchase options is as part of a $60 game package, that makes it an interesting option for players looking to get into the game. And at 400,000 Alpha UEC in-game, buying it in-game doesn't break the bank either. But, although it's versatile, easy to fly, and multi-crew capable, it really doesn't do any of these things really well. It does them, and okay, but isn't great. For example, although it's easy to fly, that's because the manoeuvring speed is so low. And although you can take on smaller combat contracts, it's not quite as strong in the melee as an Avenger, for instance. So, as a starter ship, there may be better options out there for your desired gameplay loop than the C8X. All of that said, I love this little ship. I think the looks are fantastic, and it feels like it has character. So, I can understand those who would want to buy it in or out of game. But do you agree? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, you might be interested in my recent review of the P-52 Merlin. Otherwise, thank you for watching.